This is The Scale Up Show, bringing you the latest on income, marketing, and entrepreneurship. I think the easy way to start off a podcast is probably what does dropshipping, digital marketing, and website development have in common? Because that's kind of what we have here in the city. That's we have, a good one. We yeah. have three people kind of from different ways of, uh, if you like to say, make, making money online, and they all kind of came together in some sort of agency model. Mm-hmm. And I think the kind of taken from there, it's just interesting to see how you can still come from a different area of the market, but kind of end up in a yeah, similar perspective. And by taking the learnings of all these sites, you can craft a very nice way of kind of coming into e-commerce. And I think maybe what we could say is like, from let's say like your, your perspective, uh, Corne, like if you look at website development, how did you kind of get into this and how does it look like? Yeah, yeah, I started with, uh, with website development before, but I started with e-commerce first, actually with an own store, and then we added e-commerce because it was gr- more growing. And when you're starting doing your own e-commerce business, then you also need to do your own website building in the end, because of course you can start with hiring something, but we are we're expanding and more expanding. So we decided, to, okay, we need to stay ahead of the market, so we need to do our own development, our own website creation, and we started with, um, uh, OS commerce, very old, it was around 2005. And then we m- migrated to Magento um, and later to Shopify. And uh, that's we, we, it, and that was the time I was thinking, okay, now I first started building by myself with some friends. And after a few years, I was thinking, okay, maybe we need to hire an agency. And then it was super hard to find an agency. Uh, I tried a, a server once and then I had a epiphany of thinking, okay, maybe I need to start my own web development agency. And that's what what I did. And around 2014, I started my own web development agency. And as uh, the only customer uh, in the first year was my other company. But but later on, uh, we had so much knowledge and good team that we said, okay, we can build shops for for anyone. And I think, yeah, I mean, it's just interesting as well from there is like, you you kind of have both sides of the party because you were able as an owner of a store to look yeah. at, hey, I hire a potential agency, but then now it's kind of like you are the agency side. So you can kind of, from like a, a deal perspective, you can very quickly look, hey, what will be like the mindset or the frame that these people go through before they commit? Because you were on both sides. Yes, and uh, what, what we saw was that when we are looking for an agency, there were a lot of e-commerce agencies, but they never rent an e-commerce store. So they, they think they know what, what they're doing, but we are thinking, okay, we have, totally different problems and they don't understand. Uh, for for example, if you do also your own fulfillment, um, yes, you need to maybe change your your, 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 your website so that that's working in your own warehouse. And it was so hard to find someone do, who understands the complete e-commerce game that we said, okay, if we do it by ourselves, then we start learning every uh, everything because our developers were a few meters away from our um, sales team who did all the phone calls and the support team so we get customer feedback. Oh, this is not working on the site, or maybe you can change this. And we are at the power to change something. On on on, on Thursday morning, we, we get a call from a customer with a great idea, and, and 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 after lunch, it was the same day we had it implemented on our website. Just because, yes, we did it by ourselves, but also we understand our customers better, and we understand the the total business better, and our support team or sales team had more knowledge of e-commerce business uh, from the technology side, so they under also understand the, the website better. They, they're not just an, an, a sales guy, but they also understand, okay, an, an e-commerce business a website li- works like this, so I need to have and create things and also can more think in the complete process. So you have the, the complete picture in-house. Yeah, and, th- and that was the reason to, to start the, the agency. Yeah, well, so your case, Josh, so that you, of course, kind of jumped into digital mar- marketing straight away. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, so when I started um, sort of producing content online, it was primarily focused on on fitness. So I had an online coaching business at the time. I say business, it was basically just me writing meal plans and fitness plans for people um, that found me on Instagram, because that's where it all started for me, which was uh, an Instagram page, which was focused on my fitness journey. And then alongside my Instagram page, I had a small YouTube channel. Um, So for that, I was creating content and I realized quite quickly that sort of the influencer lifestyle that I saw online, that there was so much more behind it than just creating videos on YouTube and then hoping for sponsorships and and, and deals from Gymshark and Alphalete and and stuff like that. So once I realized that it 
it's not as easy as just creating content and you get sponsorships and then you can like live life on your own terms. I started looking at other ways to create, um, to create you know, income streams, but with the online market obviously in mind. So I did really want to work from my laptop, um, but you know, I wasn't necessarily tied to one specific way of doing so. So what I did like at the time was content creation because obviously I was already doing it for myself. So then I started offering content creation to um, like businesses, local businesses mainly. Um, I think the very first video I created was for my own barber. Um, I created like a promo video for the barber shop and then um, a local company which basically um, sold and rented out cherry pickers. They saw the video and said, oh, could you do something similar for us? And that sort of got the ball rolling with content creation. But again, I was still sort of um, exchanging like time for money, which is something that I really wanted to get out of as well. Um, and around this time, uh, Ty Lopez, for those of you that um, you know, were, were basically active on YouTube or on Google uh, you know, around 2017, you guys must have seen his ads where he was uh, in his own garage with the Lamborghini in the background. And you know, everyone knows the ad where he says, like, oh, I'm here in my garage. Knowledge. Uh, yeah, knowledge. Knowledge. That, 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 that video, that actually really spiked my interest. And of course, at the time, like, in a money online was still relatively new, at least it was you know, to sort of my generation. Um, so it still felt very scammy pitched in an online course. Uh, but you know, I did it. I took the plunge. I actually spoke to my parents about it. I was like, "No, this this is real. Like, this is an opportunity here." Because uh, obviously, that was for them. For them, this this was like a red flag, right? There's some random guy online with a Lamborghini in the background saying that you could earn money online. Um, but yeah, so I literally wiped my my uh, bank account, bought the course, and then I realized that okay, I can actually offer social media marketing. Um, which is what they called it, to local businesses, because that's how it started, right? It was content creation for local businesses, and then Facebook ads and ads in general were still in its infancy. Um, so that was not even part of the equation back then. Like This was literally just social media management, I, I'd probably best say it now, uh, like managing the social media accounts, growing the Instagram pages, posting on social media, etc. cetera. Um, that's how it basically got started. And then obviously when Facebook ads became more and more popular, um, what we realized quite quickly is that content creation is great and it's essential, especially when you're a large business, but it's very hard to calculate the ROI for clients. So at the end of the month, when a client asks, okay, you guys have now posted 30 times, you've posted, you know, you've created 30 pieces of content for Instagram, 30 pieces of content for Facebook. How much money have I now made through you guys? Mm -hmm. And you can't really give an exact number. And that's where Facebook ads really came into play because you can see and show the clients, this is again, pre iOS 14 guys. Um, you could show the clients exactly in the ad account, how much money you spent more for them and how much money you made them. And that's also how I got um, into media buying and into Facebook ads. Yeah, it's, it's funny because that's kind of how, how I met Josh. It's like when yeah. I started doing our drop shipping and kind of like just <coughs> photography myself, I just kind of stumbled on a video of Josh giving away a free preset. Yeah, the it was kind of, preset, yeah, right? it was like a yeah. free Lightroom preset with like some blue filters to it. Yeah, and I just downloaded it and I started following him, and just kind of like subconsciously, I was just seeing what they're doing. And for me, it was kind of at a point where, with my study, I moved to London to do like a kind of a six month internship. And at that company, I was basically running their marketing, doing their ads as well. And yeah. I never really realized that hey, there's a business behind this. You know, like my knowledge only really was kind of getting items from AliExpress and selling them through my stores. Three months later, they kind of got shut down because either. I didn't arrive, customers got angry, all that stuff. But I did quickly realize for myself is that like I was able to sell online because I could use these ads. So yeah. I didn't really need any organic traffic because I was more than happy to spend that dollar on an ad to generate the return. And at the time I saw Judge was actually in, in London as well, I think probably for a business meeting or something. Yeah, we and actually had a, a mastermind meetup. So I met up with um, Quentin and Jovan, the owners of Choose Pristine at the time. They were from Canada. Um, and they messaged me saying, hey, you know, we know each other from social media. We've spoken a few times on Skype. This is pre-Zoom. Um, you know, let's meet up. We're in London. How far is London from Amsterdam? Because for them, obviously, you know, it's a different country for us. But for them, the distance is relatively small because they've already come mm -hmm. all the way from Canada. Um, so I was like, OK, yeah, let's let's do it. So I booked a flight to London, um, met up with Quentin and Jovan. And then I put out on my Instagram saying, um, you know, I'm in London. Anyone else want to meet up? Anyone else that is interested in social media marketing, Facebook ads, etc.? You know, let's let's all get together. And um, Aaron, you you were one of the, the guys to reply. And exactly. Because you were from the Netherlands, um, and obviously we've spoken a few times on Instagram. 
um, you know, that's sort of how we, we, we met up. I think we exchanged numbers on Instagram yeah, DM exactly. and then we actually met up there in London. And um, it's funny because you, so basically that, that was like a light bulb moment for you that you could actually offer that service. I mean, for me, it changed everything. Because yeah. like, there's a big chance if we wouldn't have met, I maybe would have never found out I could have sold my, my ad yeah. knowledge as a service. And maybe my agency would have never invented from that point. Yeah, and the crazy thing is you sort of gave me the light bulb moment like two years later because the business model that I was in at the time was, obviously it was the agency model, but it was like what, I'm, what I now call the guru version of the agency model. So I didn't actually do the media by myself. I found outsources on platforms like Upwork and Fiverr to do the work uh, on my behalf. And the downside of that is, is that the quality is never going to be as good because uh, obviously, you know, there are good media buyers that you can find online. But for me, the end game was having that profit margin as high as possible. So I wasn't necessarily looking for quality online. I was just looking for the cheapest person I could outsource this client to so that my margin was higher. And obviously, what happens is that the client will leave after a month or two. And then you need to go out and find another client. So I was in this like constant spiral of, of getting clients, losing clients, getting clients, losing clients. And then we met up in Amsterdam like two years later. Um, and then you actually said to me that you did all the media buying yourself and that you had a sales guy on the front end and you were doing the media buying on the back end and I was doing the opposite. So I was doing the sales calls and then once the client came in, um, I'll then outsource it for cheap and cheerful. And then when you show me that and you show me how relatively easy it is actually to understand Facebook ads and to look at the data, like that, that changed everything for me. And then you know, I was able to scale my agency up much quicker, maintain the clients that I had, also get better deals with the clients um, and then obviously now, you know, with the sort of the new sort of structure with the agencies also set up back end deals so that we also make more money when we get the clients better results. Yeah, exactly. And it's just funny. It's like how kind of then everything comes full circle. It's, yeah. you know, when I was kind of at a point myself as well, where we were really crossing over that six figure mark, I was kind of looking like, how do I really scale it up? And I was always big into click funnels. So I just legit was asking around in Groningen, it's like, who, who is here, who lives in this place that does the same thing as me? And I very quickly came out that uh, a guy I went to high school, uh, to college with, he worked for Cornet. And that's kind of how I met Cornet. And yeah, it's crazy. Like almost from the day one, we, we straight away met very quickly. We had the same interest. And it's kind of like uh, he then kind of almost came on board as an advisor, kind of showing me the ropes that where he failed and where he said, hey, this works amazing, which I implemented. And it's, yeah, it's amazing to see then, of course, what he can do. And then kind of two years later, now we're here. And Crené also has an amazing agency focused on email marketing. Yes, yes. Well, when, that brings me back, Erwin, to my um, uh, time at uh, I was when when I found out what ClickFunnels was was a, a short story or a, a really big story uh, before because um, I was struggling with my ecom business uh, and it was because it was quite hard. Uh, we did 100 millions and uh, we did uh, over 100 millions in turnover, but we are struggling how, how to make it bigger and it, uh, it was not fun for me personally anymore. So I was looking for something else and a friend of mine at Groningen said to me, okay, I, there's an amazing marketing event in San Diego. You need to come with me. And I was thinking, wow, wow, San, San Diego, it's not next door for me. And do I need to do that? And I was thinking, okay, maybe, maybe I need to go. It was. It feels really expensive, but, but because I was in the ecom world and I did a lot of turnover, but I had no margin. So I was thinking, <laughs> okay, paying three thousand US dollars just acts an event, and you need to fly to the event and buy tickets. And if it was a big, maybe fifteen thousand US dollars I spent to go to the marketing event. I mean, it's a big, a big investment. Yeah, it's yeah. a really big investment for just an event. And you say, okay, this will change your life, he told me. And it, it's a Dutch guy, and, it's, and I was thinking, okay, uh, okay if he says it, it will change my life, mm -hmm. just try it. I was like, okay. So I booked the tickets, bought, bought tickets for traffic and conversions in San Diego. And it was, a, it was three or four days event, and it was quite amazing. And one of the speakers was Joe Polish, and um, if I could remember, uh, we, we can look it up uh, and put it in the notes. Sure. Um, but uh, he had uh, about two s sort of businesses. He had ELF business, uh, s stands for easy, lucrative, uh, lucrative and fun, and hard. And that hard was for annoying and another f few words. So saying, okay, it was a bad business. And and my friend asked me a lot later in the bar, from, okay, what is your business? Is your wh How is your econ business? Is it an uh, ELF business, easy, lucrative and fun? Or it's really hard. And okay, it's super hard. It's super annoying to do, and I want to change things. So, 
And at the same day, I also met uh, Russell Brunson and he was giving away books there at the booth. He, he was there himself at that time. And it was really nice. So I, I got a book, Expat Secrets and, and dot com Secrets. I got it for mm -hmm. free. I was thinking, okay, wow. And, and it's, maybe it was for one year and maybe or, or six, seven months just in my, in my, my still in my bag for my traveling when <laughs> I come back. And, and w when I started uh, online, uh, with uh, uh, more, uh, okay, maybe I can test click funnels for, for my e com business and it works really well. And that was the moment I was in the Facebook group, I think, uh, of, uh, of click funnels, and just maybe adding a post. And then, we, and you, everyone was liking that post for some reason. And like, oh, and, um, and my co worker said, okay, uh, yes, I know that guy. And yes, and then, yes, then we meet up for uh, uh, maybe a few weeks later or something. Yeah, it's crazy how this comes full circle because it's kind of like you. At least like from my perspective on the table, it's kind of like just introduced me to the business because otherwise I probably wouldn't have an agency. And then kind of me allowing it to scale is how kind of Cornet comes in. And this is also, I think, nice to see now with, of course, you um, having sold your web development agency, kind of getting bigger with what you technically have already been doing because you were all, always selling um, your email marketing services, but it was kind of like a side side thing. Yes. And so now, of course, it's its yeah, own yeah. big thing. Well, because... Um, E-commerce de uh, development is super nice to really build things and um, to, to do that, but the hard part is it's also quite complicated. And yes, you need a larger team. And I was thinking, okay, maybe I, I want to switch to just do one thing because so some other friends of me, they have also great businesses and they only do one thing. They're building just CRM software or they have a void business, for example. They do just one, only one thing only. And I was thinking, okay, but my agency is doing marketing and development and so I want to narrow down to, to just one thing, and I want to think of what what is what do I really like personally to do, and what was the biggest m uh, money driver in my econ business was email marketing, and I was thinking, okay, I need just need to do email marketing full service. So as we did for my econ business, what brings me uh, brings in uh, a lot of money, and and then I said, okay, just start an agency in e in email marketing. And I pitched it with Airbnb, so okay, maybe it's, 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 so, so, should there be a market for it? And, and we start testing it and it works really, really well. And then I decided, okay, um, sold Butter Street, the web development agency, and full focus on message pool with only email marketing and SMS. But I see the emails. Yeah, the and main, the main thing, thing is like in, in itself, you kind of conclude, I think what the biggest struggle is, at least I would assume of, of uh, an e-com owner, if you like to call it nowadays, it's like you try to wear too many hats. Mm -hmm. which is fine and completely yeah. understandable, especially Definitely. in the beginning, because there is, you know, you, there's a margin you have to play with. But I think you very quickly also have to realize is like, where are opportunities for me to either outsource or see, hey, where do I need expert advice? Because you, you do need at a certain point you know, to, get the, to get the machine rolling, especially yeah. when you have product market fit, which I think should always be your number one point. Yeah. If you do not have product market fit, in my opinion, do not spend any money on ads, because at the end of the, end of the day, there's always going to be something that is going to break for you. So if you do have product market fit, then look for yourself. Like, where are your strengths? Like, are you a design person? Mm -hmm. Are you a uh, are you a marketer? Could also be the case. Because I think it's like um, it's I say it's like it's easy to say because quite a lot of people always recommend you do like a personality test, and it sounds very lame, but I think it's super helpful. Yeah, I agree. Because in my opinion, it's like if you do that personality as you know who really who you are, and if you do look and search for a potential mentor, go for someone that fits the same personality as you because you will 100% click with each other and kind of the journey they took, it would also apply to you. Whereas if you take someone on the opposite side of the scale, so let's say, because um, I know for example from Josh and me, we're both pretty much like more on the introverted side. Yeah. Like we are very, like we are at our best so we can just work on our own on our laptop. So if we would go out front and talk all the time, our business will hurt because mm -hmm. we know we're gonna be tired and doing all the stuff. But if you do not know that, and you go take advice from someone who is an extrovert who tells you, you need mm. to be on TikTok all the time, you need to be on Instagram all the time, you will burn out. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the same with, with a lot of e-commerce. I started my e-commerce uh, e business just myself and a friend, um, uh, and we, we did everything. Uh, we, we built a complete website. We also thinking, okay, maybe hosting on the external service. Uh, we, we don't know sure it's safe, so we, we buy our own hardware and we, <laughs> we did everything. We, we had our own mail servers with our own website servers. And, but, but we also did our own logistics. So we, when we got an order, we, we went to the warehouse and uh, grabbed some tape in a box and, and, <laughs> and, and prepared a package. And, but at a certain point, you need to decide, what Aaron is saying, what, what is your biggest strength and, and, and where you can make the difference? And 
most e-commerce entrepreneurs don't can make the difference in their warehouse, for example, also not in their marketing. They maybe they can advise in okay, this is my target audience, but you need a real expert because with so many channels at the moment, it's so hard to do everything perfect. And if you run an e-commerce business, yes, your main goal needs to be do everything perfect because your customers leave a bad review. If you if you if your uh, if your if your warehouse make uh, makes a failure and send out the wrong package to, to the end customer, or if your marketing sucks, you don't have any sales at all. So it's so important to do everything right. It's it's impossible uh, nowadays to do uh, yes uh, on one man show for example do yeah, everything by yourself and it's like a, as well as like there there's absolutely no shame in also seeking for help you know and I think it's like uh, sometimes I do feel like that just the world we're in right now especially when it comes to let's say you call it info products technically of course that's what they are if you buy knowledge from someone online it sometimes get like a very bad name but it's super helpful because yeah. like ultimately you do want to get to a certain point. So I think always the best thing you can do is find someone who is where you want to be and obviously emulate them. You know, they've already done it. There's no need for you to reinvent the wheel. So you can always just go there and either, if that is a course that they offer, you could buy that course to gain access to that knowledge. Yeah. Then you, at least you have the knowledge, you can apply it how you want to. 100%. You know? I, think, yeah. I think if you look at courses, especially when you're starting out, courses and coaching is probably the highest ROI investment exactly. that you, you can make. I think if I look at the courses that I did when I was just starting out, every single course, whether it was the community attached or that one video that just takes you to the next level, every single one has been helpful in some capacity. Like obviously nowadays we, we sort of, I wouldn't say buy courses for fun, but obviously we, we do a lot of competitive research. And um, you know obviously now we look at it from a different perspective, but especially when you're starting out, every penny that you can reinvest in yourself in the form of courses, uh, coaching, uh, even books, you know, any, anything like that, I think is going to be super helpful. And like Evan said, you can try and reinvent the wheel or you can try and figure it all out for yourself, but you will go so much quicker if you invest into guidance. And the reason why I say invest into guidance rather than just be on YouTube, because obviously there's a lot of content available on YouTube, but I do believe that you need to have, first of all, skin in the game. If you're just you know, going off of YouTube content because it's free, because there's no investment attached to it, you're less likely to take action in my opinion. And second of all, a lot of content on YouTube, in my opinion, is fluff. There'll be one concept, one goal to know it, but it'll be a 20, 30 minute video. Why? Because first of all, they want the watch time for AdSense. And second of all, they're most likely trying to sell you something on the back end, whether that is a program, a community, a course, an ebook, whatever it is, they're trying to give you just a little bit to pique your interest so that you buy the rest via a paid program. And there's nothing wrong with the paid program, but as long as you're aware of that and that, you know, the YouTube content, that golden nuggets or that, that, specific thing that you're trying to figure out what's behind the curtain the easy way to get it is just to actually you know purchase the program or purchase the course yeah, it's always like you by doing so you quickly get access to kind of the the, the end goal you want to get to and i think obviously it's at a certain point it also become a skill to for you to identify those golden nuggets because i think it's i can now pretty quickly go on a youtube video i can skim through the 30 minutes and very quickly find what i'm looking for because i know what i'm searching for yes yes yeah, so the, 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 the main problem with YouTube is thing there may, may even if there's a good video but um, after the videos ended uh, automatically a new video will start so almost the same subject mm -hmm. different angle and yes and after you're watching three four five that kind of videos of the same subject you're searching for you are get confused from uh, everything is a little bit different and sometimes it's even better to maybe watch a uh, one course and focus on on, 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 on on one program, maybe not even the best program, but just focus on that and do one thing right and try to do everything. Yeah, and it, I mean, and it's, you know, it's of course not only with info products, it's everywhere in the world. Yeah. Like it's the, the easy example I always say is fitness. It's like, if you want to lose weight, I mean, go to YouTube right now and type in, I want to get a six pack. There's going to be 10,000 strategies. And it's kind of like when you watch all those videos, most likely on Sunday evening, you'll get home and you're even more decommitted because there are so many options, you don't know where to go. Yeah, there's information so, overload. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like it can also hurt you from that perspective. So it's kind of like you have to stick to the part that you want to do yourself and very quickly commit to one thing and give it time. You yeah. know, it's kind of like, again, to come back to, to beautiful fitness, it's like if I now go do one push up, I'm not going to get a big chest. You know, it's kind of with this as well. You do need to commit time. You need to see how it plays out. Because I see a lot of people, they start one day, there's no results the next day, and they kind of move on. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it, uh, overnight success is it, it doesn't exist, I think. Always. No, exactly. And, 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 and what you also see, especially on YouTube and Instagram, is uh, they only show the success. But mm-hmm. if I see where I come from <laughs> and, uh, and and other podcasts, we, we will dive deeper in that. But it, it's a super long journey. And um, and also all our agencies, uh, it was not success in, in day one. It was in a, not a day two. It was not a month six, for example. It, it takes time. And most people forget that, especially e-commerce entrepreneurs, I, they, they put a website online and sometimes they get uh, the first orders in the first day. That's possible. But um, for, for a long-term success, yes, you need to do a lot of, a lot of work. And obviously, it's, it's action, what everyone says. It's kind of like a thing everyone does it. The, you, you go to you know what we call here the Chamber of Commerce. You uh, make your business. Next day, you wake up and you're going to build a website. You're going to build a logo. It's kind of like that logo and website is not going to get you a client. No, true. You know, and it's just kind of like, I don't know why, it seems like we either installed that that seems to be, and I think always just like, uh, you have this piece of thing from Denzel Washington when he uh, does something with a college, and he always says, it's like, you think like if you're running, it doesn't mean you're actually doing something, you know? It's kind of like if you try to get fit and you go and run every morning, but you just kind of like speed walking, you're not getting anywhere. But in your brain, yeah. you're thinking you're doing something. Yeah, so yeah, and, like and that's the same same with, with a website. Uh, we, uh, uh, especially when with the uh, web development agency, we get a lot of calls from starting entrepreneurs. who they want first uh, the most amazing website. My first e-commerce store was even an e-commerce store. It was just one page with a with a fax number where you can fax your order. Yeah, <laughs> and, I mean, and, and it works like a turn. I was sitting sitting no notebook computer at the, at the time, but. It was not even an e-commerce store, so it, it, it even doesn't matter how your store looks. If your offer is great and you have a great offer in a great market fit, then it maybe will come. But yeah. yeah, I think that's probably one of the most important things right now is the offer, because a lot of people now are obviously you know, trying to offer Facebook ads, but how are you going to stand out from all the rest? There's so many people now offering Facebook ads. There's so many people now, and you you sort of see it as well on social media. The guarantees that people are claiming are like it's it's, it's crazy. It's spiraling out of control. Like last uh, last week, I saw someone guaranteeing a ROAS of eight for every client that that joins you know, their agency. Like that is there's so many factors that come into play to get an eight ROAS. And of course, you need to be asking yourself why would you want an eight ROAS in the first place? You know, if if you can like how how scalable is a ROAS of eight? And the same goes for info product coaches and gurus. The claims that they're making, obviously, you know, are spiraling out of control as well. Make 100K in the first two minutes of, of buying the course, etc. You know, it's it's getting crazy because people are trying to do something to stand out from the crowd. Um, obviously, that is one way of, of going about it. But I do think that if you create a specific offer that your target audience needs, then, you know, that is obviously the way to, to stand out from the rest. But with, you know, with that in mind, just focus on what it actually is that you're offering and make sure that it's actually sustainable rather than saying an eight row ass guarantee or that you'll make money within you know 21 days of, of joining the program yeah and prevent for it uh, i always call it the shiny object syndrome if you start with one thing exactly and and then yeah. oh that's maybe maybe i need to start a youtube cash cow channel because i see some people making money with it yes of course start do it directly now of course not don't do it because if you Today do this and tomorrow do that. That that's not working. It takes time. That's and that yeah. I, I also need to learn. And I also suffer from that syndrome sometimes. Well, I, I think, think okay, I need to try it. it so yeah. let's try that. But uh, if you stay focused for at least six months, maybe a year, yes, you can make a difference. Yeah, hundred percent. And obviously, it's like make the choice as well. Why why do you want to do this? Because I see it's like especially with for example, what we have with console actually, we get people on the call you very quickly can feel as like, why why did they even get into this business model? Mm-hmm. Like if you try and build an agency just because on Instagram you see other people driving around the Ferraris, having the beautiful watches on the Bali beaches, like, you know, I'm gonna have bad advice for you because a year from now you're gonna burn down. Yeah. Because if you if you do get to the point and you attain, let's call these riches, it's gonna be empty for you. There's nothing there. You know, it's kind of like if you start becoming an entrepreneur because you wanna get the Lamborghini, it's you're completely starting on the run offset. Yes, yeah. I, no. think, I think also as if money is the one, the the, the main goal is also the wrong goal. Uh, if you uh, if you not, yeah. uh, if and you of course like it's no, don't get me wrong, like we're in business to make money. Of course, you, know, you yes, need to make yes. profit, but yeah, but but if if it's the main, also you need to be uh, feeling happy, of course. Uh, if you're just making money and but you really hate the work, uh, just also don't do it. Uh, you can make even more money if you find uh, a niche or, or or a purpose for yourself. What's much working much better. Yeah. For me, for me, case it was with, with the email marketing. It's 
it was it's f- uh, m- much more relaxing to do. So I'm go happier, open my computer uh, every day to mm-hmm. start uh, going to work. And in the end, I even make more money because um, yes, uh, I'm more happy. So my clients also see that I have more energy to, to, to get more exactly. better yeah. results for them. So yeah. Yeah, That's I couldn't agree more. I think I, the money is, you can make money in any way. There's so many ways to make money. So why not pick a way that you actually enjoy doing? Why not pick something that you're passionate exactly. about? Exactly. And I think that just all comes down to what do you want out of life? You know, what kind of lifestyle do you want? And then once you figure out what kind of lifestyle you want, what is it that you want to do on a daily basis? You know, what kind of um, like your, what kind of locations you want to live in? What kind of house do you want to live in? What kind of car do you want to drive? There is no right or wrong. You know, it's completely up to you. Once you have that, you can reverse engineer. Okay, what business model will fit that lifestyle best? How can I get there the quickest way uh, with a business model? And then probably before you even pick a business model, pick an offer. I think because that's even more important because like Ewan said, both, you know, we're both relatively introverted. So having a sales kind of offer or a sales business will probably just leave us burnt out. It's not something that we both enjoy doing. So we've now picked an offer, which is obviously this is, you know, performance marketing media buying that fits our lifestyle best because that is, you know, obviously much more in line with who we are as people and as individuals. And then of course, with the offer, we can now build a business model, which is the agency. Yeah, exactly. And it, it will also kind of like, it will show you like the, the world or like the gods, if you like to call it, it will show you the way how you can grow it. Yeah. Because you know, it's like with, like Josh said, like me knowing I'm introverted, for me, the next step, of course, would be to kind of either outsource or get someone to do it. That's kind of how I found my current business partner who just came into my business kind of from a 50-50 perspective, which allowed me to just do all the ad stuff. And he could focus on uh, uh, sales and all that stuff. So then basically you get two people doing what they're best at. And by doing this, synergy is always going to happen. It's, it's like, I think if if we would give, like, of course, we're going into 2023, if we would have to read the, the news, like we're on the verge of, uh, of bankruptcy worldwide. The world is going to end soon. It's kind of like if we would have to give, um, just let's say like e-commerce in general, mm-hmm. like um, our, our biggest tip or what I would recommend is, at least from my side, um, whatever I do in life, it's always 80-20 principle. Yeah. So every e-commerce person I hop on a call with, one of my biggest questions always is gonna be is like, do you know your best seller? And it sounds like a very obvious question, but a lot of people literally do not know. That's like, so do- funny, that, that's, that's so funny. <laughs> I have so much customers, they don't know what, what's the best selling product. No, and it's, it's kind of like, we can laugh about it, but it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's so I, weird. I, 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 I a little bit laugh about it, uh, it's, it's really weird to have, because how, how can you not, not know? But but to actually, when I, I only realized that when I started my, agency before I had an econ business and I also didn't know. Of course I had statistics and I and I, and I, and well, I don't know what, what my best selling product from last month was, but not overall, for example. And and, and because I was working on so many things in my econ business, it was so hard to to sometimes see the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. I mean this, you get this, stuck in your tunnel vision. Yeah, you get tunnel vision and, and, and that's and, and now we laugh about it. Well, oh the customer doesn't know their best best selling product. But um it's it's of course, they, they really want to know, but it's so hard to do everything right and just also see the big picture of your company. And it doesn't matter if you have an e-com business or well, whatever kind of business it is, but it's also really important to have some of, yes, helicopter view, for example, uh, um, from this, where is your business really yeah, uh, at the moment? It yeah. Ultimately, it's always any, any market is a supply and demand game. So if you sell an item and you know it's selling really well for you, why go and create something new where you have to create demand for it? Like right now you legit have an item, there is demand coming to your side buying that item. Like keep doing it. Like keep keep pumping this item out as long as you can. And if you, you can look at the biggest companies in the world, you know, we, we all know the gym sharks, you know, we know we know all of them. And if you kind of often look at their product offering, it's technically it's the same. Like they know yeah. what their best sellers are. They've done uh, 10 million colors at this point in them, but it will keep selling because you can go from fee one to fee two to yeah, fee three and, to and fee four. Yes, and that's also the, the success uh, with, with, with click funnels from Ross Ronson is um, why are the fun- funnels working? Because they're just putting their best product in the funnel yeah. and, mm-hmm. and only pushing that one product. Uh, I was uh, a few years ago, I was at Funnel Hacking Live and was, um, I forget the name of the guy, but he, he was selling jewelry and he was only uh, um, uh, selling one piece, millions of them. One color, no variation, and he makes much more money than the most jewelry stores, I think, in the U.S. But only one item because he he he, he marketed differently. He he, he he had his ads right, his target audience was right, and his one just one offer. And and it's so important to 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 know um, to know your core offer. I see so many 
people start an e-com business and think, okay, I need to list as many as products I can find. Yeah. Uh, don't do that. No. <laughs> Make it easy for yourself. Yeah, like Russell says, right? You're only one offer away. Exactly. I think that's it. Kind of summarizes everything that's in it. I say, well, will we have any other tips going into 2023? Yeah, yeah. Um, build an email list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I can't. Add, I can't add anything to that. It's. Uh, it, it, it sounds so silly, but. Um, own your own customers, it's super important. Eh? You can, of course, uh, you need to do ads, so don't get me wrong, but um, but my, my, my main goal is always, okay, first, of course, get the conversion on your e-com business. If this conversion is not happening for whatever reason, just try to get their email address, because if you're paying for a click for an ad, yes, you have at least one result, and maybe you can sell them later. Yeah, it's traffic you own. It's funny, because in 2016, 17, when I was literally just starting out, I got the same advice, build an email list. And I was like, we're in 2017, like who still reads email, who uses email? And it's funny because my email list is probably the, one of the biggest assets that I have. You know, I've got, my email list is relatively small because I'm constantly cleaning it up and, and you know, removing people that are unengaged. But my email list is, I'd say about four or 5,000 people right now. I know for a fact that each time I send an email, I'll get at least one conversion. You know, whether that is promoting more life garments, whether that is promoting the course, whether that's promoting, um, you know, the opportunity to book a call with our sales team to see how we can help you further as, you know, uh, as, you know, course creators, but also for the agency. Uh, each time I send an email blast out, I'll get some kind of conversion. And it's, it's crazy, you know, how high the conversion rate is on emails when you look at it compared to, um, you know, paid traffic. The ultimate is loyalty, you know? It's just an extra extension to your sales funnel. So every time they see an email from you, it just adds an extra touch point. And if they're ready, like once they're ready to commit, they will find you. Yeah, yeah, yes. And um, I started just by building my email in the time I started with Facebook marketing. It was super easy to get likes and their likes were very were, were useful at that time. I, it's Those eight, were the times, years man. Ago. Old times. I know it's like still one of my best YouTube videos. Like yeah. how, how, how to get page likes. Yeah, yeah, how to get page likes. Yeah, how to get page likes. <laughs> but the funny part was I was thinking, okay, the page likes and even, it was so stupid, even the, um, when I get more financial for my uh, company but to buy more stock, that, that was the idea at that moment. Even the Facebook, the, the bank also likes the Facebook likes. Oh, you have, you, I had, I had forty thousand likes for my uh, my company page. Oh, that's that's quite a lot. Eh? Uh, it, even the, uh, so, it was no. If the bank uh, gives the so, sort of value, but I was thinking, mm -hmm. I, I, I really want this like. So what, what I just started was some super simple promoting on my Facebook. Okay, subscribe to my newsletter and get something free. And mm -hmm. um, and and that, and that was uh, just uh, how I created my first list, just to give away something. Yeah, you just have to get more creative nowadays. I think it's kind yeah. of like in the, you know, the 16, 17, 18s, we could all just kind of give free shipping or 10% off, which was yeah. back then, it was kind of unique because everyone would take it. Whereas of course nowadays it kind of comes into the guarantee world that we live in. That is like, yeah, people are not as inclined anymore to do it because they have seen it so much. Yeah. So like what I, for example, see what works really great. is like, hey, give your email and every week or every month, we'll give away a 300, 400, $500 gift card to someone on our email list which makes it more action-based. And there's really something you're giving away. But yeah. of course, and they don't get me wrong, like just giving free shipping or 10% off, they will always convert. You know, it is a something, like it's a, a, a discount percentage you can give to someone and a lot of people will always take it. Yes, and I think if you, yeah, uh, we, we call it email list newsletter, but if you rephrase, rename it, and you just call it for a community, for the email community. And what we do for some customers is that if you subscribe to the list and you stay on the list, that's that's the, really important you get longer return rates uh, earlier discounts for example and for some electronic stores we give uh, longer war warranties for example so normally you have uh, maybe two years of uh, warranty and if you um, join their email list and you stay on the list as long as you're on the list you get five years of warranty for example and that keeps people gives a lot more value than just a discount or a white paper or whatever but yeah. yes give them also something that you stay on the list. Just one incentive to sign up, it's, it's not working because they use their spammy email address for getting the code and never open your email again. But if you give them a real value, and I also see it when I subscribe to your newsletter, and it's just for, oh, okay, it's five euros discount or five US dollars discount to sign up. They think, okay, this I will now use my spam email address. And that's a, a weird Gmail address for years and there's millions of emails coming in there. It's nice to have all the data, but by the way, that's a different story. But um, 
uh, if I use it, I say, okay, but you, you join our club and you get a lot of information or they share knowledge or, or whatever, then I say, okay, this is, I, I now will use my main email because I really want to see it, these emails. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's probably kind of, I think the perfect way how we, we can kind of uh, end getting into 2023, what you should be doing. And then we could probably end it as well is what, what embodies, I think what Corneille kind of just said is there's also a big part when it comes to function versus design. It's like I've been on so many calls where it all, the only conversation, like only touch point was how it looks. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, you know, you're building a brand, it needs to look amazing, I'm all for it. But ultimately what's gonna drive you forward is having a website ultimately that converts. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and th that's a re great subject for our next episode, I think. Exactly. Because, um, that as it's sometimes so funny that, that, that the, the design is only what counts. We, we saw it with website audits, for example, and then you, you, then you work six months on a project with the client on the website, and then we, uh, we send them videos, we show them, we invite to our office, and the only feedback we get was for the front page. Yeah, and that's, and that's and and that's maybe the page you go if you are really going to the do main domain name and you hit enter and you say oh that's the front page, but ninety percent of your customers will go to the landing page. It's mostly your product page when that's what you're advertising. Yeah, exactly. And we really need to train every customer to say okay, thanks for your feedback, but this is not the most important page. This your product page. That's where you make the money, and it's so. Yeah, there was every time we were surprised, even with larger customers, with we're doing already tens of millions online, and they are just giving us feedback on the front page. So, and I have a lot of more to tell about this, but yeah, that's for the next episode. Yeah, we'll probably keep that for the yeah. next podcast. So Perfect. Yeah, thanks everyone for listening, and we'll see you all in the next one.